Hello, this is Mrs. Nearing, and this can be a really short video thinking about error analysis in the lab for the molar mass of a gas. So I summarize down here on the bottom. Whenever you're thinking about error, you want to think about um, how something would impact your measurements, which measurements it would impact, and whether it would make those measurements either higher or lower than they should be in reality. So you want to think about the big picture and what you're calculating. So down here at the bottom, I basically summarized the whole calculation that we did into one equation here. So we're trying to find the molar mass of a gas, which is the grams per mole. The way that we found the mass of our gas is to take the mass of the lighter before and subtract the mass of the lighter afterwards. And then the way that we found moles was using PB equals nRT. So if you rearrange and solve for N, that's P times V divided by R times T. So here's your, here's all the numbers that go into your calculations. And when you're thinking about error, like questions like, you know, number three here, if the lighter was still wet with excess water when you waited afterwards, what would this do to your molar mass? So if you're presented with a scenario like this, you want to ask yourself, which value would this thing affect? Would it affect my mass value, my pressure value, my volume value, my temperature value? If it affects my mass value is going to affect my mass before or my mass afterwards and is it going to make that mass too high or too low and if it makes it too high what is what are those implications my molar mass if it makes it too low what are those implications so like thinking in this scenario like if it makes the mass of my lighter afterwards too high so if that makes my final volume too large then that's going to make my mass of my gas too small, right? Because I'm going to be subtracting a larger number, so that will give us a smaller value. And if my mass is smaller, then my calculated molar mass is going to be smaller. If a error, let's say, causes our volume, our measured volume, to be lower, that's going to make my number of calculated moles lower and when you divide by a smaller number, you'll end up with a larger molar mass. So you just have to ask yourself, this error, which measurement does it affect? Does it make that measurement too high or too low? And how does that carry through in my calculations? Like what will that end up doing to my molar mass in the end? And in this lab, I will say the two biggest sources of error are likely to be in your mass measurement and your volume measurement. Your temperature measurement is not likely to be a big source of error because if your thermometer read, you know, 20 degrees instead of 21 degrees, if you think about the significance of that, we're talking maybe, you know, 293 Kelvin instead of 294 Kelvin. It's not going to be a big difference. Um, pressure is something that we measured to three significant figures, so that's not going to be a huge source of error. So the big ones, they're going to be the volume and the mass. Um, unless you had something else weird going on experimentally that you want to talk about. So hopefully this gives you some ideas when you're thinking about error analysis, both for the analysis questions and in your conclusion. Thanks.